So the industry has quite a portfolio of alternative fuels, let's call them, that we're able to bring to bear even today. Natural gas, uh, we've had natural gas engines on the scene for oh, at least 10 years, probably longer. There have been some developments there that you know that are probably worth mentioning. Uh, but we're also looking at battery electric as a possible solution. We mentioned uh, that a little bit earlier on in the conversation. Um, and even hydrogen and fuel cell uh, are, are starting to emerge as um, potential solutions for the, for the uh, challenges that we have related to emissions. You know, you know me, I love technology. <laughs> I, I love looking down the road and seeing what's coming and trying to adjust our business in a way that makes us sustainable and relevant, right? It's interesting. Uh, it was probably, I'm going to guess, maybe eight, maybe even 10 years ago, I gave a presentation and I was talking about what I call the fuel pie, right? 10 years from now, or maybe 20 years from now, I don't, I don't even know for sure. At some point, you're going to see that pie tick so that diesel is no longer the dominant fuel for commercial vehicles. So it's going to be, it's going to go from being 51% down to 49%. And then the other half of that pie is going to be little slivers, right? You're going to have natural gas, but not just natural gas. You have CNG, you have LNG, you have adsorbed natural gas, yeah. ANG. And then you have renewable flavors of all three of those flavors, right? Then you have hybrids of those, right? And then the same thing with battery, different kinds of hybrids in the battery different kinds of hybrids in the, in the hydrogen world and in the fuel cell world. So you, you have agno fuel agnostic engines that are in development right now. Um, it's, just, it's just mind boggling. And the thing to keep in mind is that the buyers of these trucks or these, these powertrains are gonna have to look at what the capabilities of the solutions are and see how they mesh with what their duty cycle is, what their, what their vocation is. Because there's not gonna be one size fits all, right? It's, there's no silver bullet, I, I, a silver buckshot yeah. is kind of, the, kind of the way we describe it, right? So each one of those slices is gonna have a, a sweet spot, a place where it's gonna make sense. Um, every single one of them has to have the critical success factors. That's generic to the framework of what's going on. You have to have the engine or the source, the solution, right? You have to have the fuel. You have to have the infrastructure to support the fuel. You have to have the mechanics and the spare parts inventories to keep those powertrains up and running. It doesn't, and it doesn't matter, again, what the flavor is, uh, but each one of those things is gonna have to be in place. And we've always talked about the chicken and the egg in this aspect, right? So the manufacturers really are the ones who have to step up and have to start making these things available so that the customers have then the opportunity to evaluate them and say, hey, does this technology, does this solution make sense for the way I do business? And can I make it work? 